strategy for de designing uh, algorithms, and this is called the divide and conquer strategy. So what have we seen? We've seen greedy strategies, we've seen dynamic programming. Uh, you know, all these different approaches, that's a new one. When those other ones uh, fail, you might think about this one. And um, a classic one is uh, Merck's Here's a list that we have to uh, sort. Yeah. What we want to do is we want to sort everything between positions i and positions j in an array. Here's positions i and here's here's position i and here's position j. So there are other numbers out here. for starting uh, the production. Well, why uh, would we uh, put this thing about I and J? Usually, uh, when the customer uh, wants something sorted, they don't want a section of an array sorted. They want the whole thing sorted. Well, if we can solve this problem, why have we uh, solved the customer's problem? Yeah. It, yeah, uh, the customer says, I want my whole array sorted, so we say, we hand it to this thing and we give, we tell it to sort everything between position zero and n minus one. But by uh, allowing ourselves to sort just sections of it, we'll be able to make recursive calls on smaller uh, instances of the problem. There are smaller sections of the array. So, um, Here's our first problem between I and J. We're going to divide this into two. So here are two recursive problems. Five, two, seven, nine. These are smaller instances of the original problem. So uh, this is. Position K, and this is position J. Okay, we sort everything between position I and position K recursively, and between position K plus one and position J, we sort that recursively. And by induction, we can assume uh, that they work. We're putting together the proof as we're describing uh, the algorithm. So what comes back from this? Everything has been shuffled around. So what we really want to do is we want to shuffle this section of the array without uh, touching anything else. And we want to shuffle it into a sort of order. So this thing comes back 2, 5, 5, 7, 9. And this one comes back 1, 3, 4, 8. We still don't have everything between I and J uh, sort of. But this is an easier problem now. To sort, to collate two sorted lists into their so sorted order, this is um, much easier than just taking two scrambled lists and trying to get them into a sorted order. So, what can we do? We uh, create an auxiliary array over here, and uh, we take our uh, fingers and we put them at these uh, first two positions. These are the smallest elements of the two. So uh, one of them is the smallest element overall. One of them is the element that has to go in the position, in the first position. Which of these two is smaller? It's the one. We copy it into the first position. And we advance that finger. Now we see two and three. Okay, uh, excluding the one, one of two and three is the smallest element overall. It's two. Copy the two here. We advance that finger. Now we compare uh, the three and the five. Three is the smallest. The four and the five, the four is the smallest. The five and the eight, the five is the smallest. The 
seven and the eight, the seven is the smallest, and then uh, we have the nine and the eight. The eight is the smallest now. We, our fingers run off the end, and we copy everything from the other array. Okay, so we start with this. Two recursive calls. We assume by induction that they do what they're supposed to. That's what we see here. And then we collate. How long does this, this collation operation is called merge? How long does it take? Well, notice that every time I advance one of the fingers, we've spent all of one time. And how many times do there's n elements from here to here? And is equal to j minus i plus 1. Um, there's n elements between there. How many times can I advance my finger? Well, n over 2 in each of these things. So I advance my fingers n times. Each time I take O of 1. So this merge operation uh, takes O of n. Yeah. Um, How can uh, we figure out the running time? This is what we want to get at. So uh, the running time is t of n. Now, we don't know what t of n is either. T of n is the number of operations that this thing takes uh, when you run it on an array of size n on the RAM model in the worst case. So t of n is what we want to find out. Well. Um, how are we going to compute t of n? Well, this whole thing is going to take t of n time. How long does it take to start this? One? t of n over 2. So by putting a name to this, we can uh, start to express it, uh, the running time of it recursively itself. It's a recursion that mimics the recursion of the algorithm. So, This is the first recursive call plus t of n over 2. This is the second recursive call plus what's left, the time uh, for the merge operation. Constant times n. Okay. We have the base case, which is when we get down to one operation, uh, that takes something like b operation. So, uh, this gives us a function of t of n is equal to 2 t of n over 2 plus b n. And for a base case, t of 1 is equal to 1. For a minute, let's assume uh, that n is a power of 2. That's going to mean that every time we divide it by uh, 2, it's going to divide evenly into two equal size subproblems. In general, when we run merge sort, n won't be a power of 2, but let's first see what kind of bound we can get if n is a power of 2. Okay, um, t of 1 is equal to c. Now, um, the cn, all we want is a big O bound on uh, t of n. So, does it matter whether it's cn here or n? If all we want is a big O band on t of n, we're acknowledging just a big O band, we might as well do this. And uh, if all we want is a big O band, we don't care if it's b or 1. So now we have a new one. t of n is equal to 2t of n over uh, 2 plus m, and t of 1 is equal to 1. This is enough information to assign uh, values to t of n for when n is uh, power of 2. So here's our uh, table. What's uh, the value of t of n for n equals 1? It's 1. The next power of 2 is 2. So it's 2 times t of n over 2, which is 2 times this plus 2, which is equal to 4. C 
see how, so I plugged in two times t of one, so it's two times one, plus n, n is equal to two, so it's two times one plus two is equal to four. The next power of two, now that we know uh, what t of n is uh, for two, this is essentially dynamic programming. It's two times t of t of two equal to two times four plus four is equal to twelve. So this is going to be two times t of four plus eight which is equal to uh, 2 times 24 plus 8, which is equal to uh, 32. 2 times 32 plus 16, 64, uh, 80. So to, uh, 2 times 80 plus 32. 160 Okay, we can see that this thing had jumped by a factor of four between here and here. Between here and here, jumped by a factor of three. Between here and here, it jumped by a little less than a factor of three. Between here and here, the ratio of these is getting smaller and smaller. But we wouldn't say it's uh, growing in proportion right now. And uh, the ratio would always be uh, 2. These ratios are staying a little bit above 2, but they're getting closer and closer. Uh, so it seems like we still aren't uh, any closer uh, to getting a big open to this, even though we now have a way to um, assign values uh, to the T. So when we Here's a picture of uh, Merch operating. So what, what's the total cost at this level? It's, yeah, the total, it's O1 uh, for each of these uh, things, because T of 1 is equal to 1. So the total cost for this level is 8. Now this level, what's the cost at this level excluding what we've already counted? Well, we have a merge on two elements. The cost of that is 2. t of 2 is equal to 2 plus 2t two of n over 2. So the, excluding the uh, cost of the recursive culture, this is 2, 2, 2, 2. This is 8. What about this? The cost of this is 4, excluding what we did in the recursive cost, because we've already done it. The cost of this is 4. What's the total cost of this? This is 8. What's the total cost here? It's a merge on two things of size 4. The total cost is 8. In general, when this is n up here, n is the power of 2, what's the total cost of each level? n. How many levels are there? There's log base 2 of n uh, levels, because uh, log base 2 of n is just the number of times that we can divide by 2 until we get down to 1. The sizes of the recursive call are dividing by 2 each time. So it's n times log base 2 of n. This is our running uh, time for, uh, um, this is our big theta bound for uh, t of n. Okay, now, um, now what do we do uh, when n is not a power of 2? Well, we have 